And hello again from Fox News in Washington. More tough questions for the NSA after the Washington Post reported this week that the agency violated privacy rules thousands of times since 2008. An internal audit obtained from leaker Edward Snowden reveals that the nation's most secretive spy agency intercepted phone calls and emails of American citizens repeatedly during that time and in some cases did not report the unauthorized surveillance. Now some lawmakers are promising hearings. Joining us with reaction is Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, a member of the Senate Homeland Security Committee and author of Government Bullies. Senator, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good to be with you this morning. Good morning. It was just a little more than a week ago that the president insisted to the American people that there was appropriate oversight of the NSA surveillance program and that there was no talk of abuses. Let's play what the uh, president said. What you're not reading about is the government actually abusing these programs and uh, you know, listening in on people's phone calls or inappropriately reading people's emails. What you're hearing about is the prospect that these could be abused. Senator Paul, what do you make of that statement now that this new information has come to light? You know, I think the president fundamentally misunderstands the constitutional separation of powers because the checks and balances are supposed to come from independent branches of government. So he thinks that if he gets some lawyers together from the NSA and they do a PowerPoint presentation and tell him everything's okay, that the NSA can police themselves. But one of the fundamental things that our founders put in place was they wanted to separate police power from the judiciary power. So they didn't want police to write warrants, and the NSA are a type of police. They wanted the judiciary, an independent, open judiciary, responsive to the people with open debate in public. So I think the constitutionality of these programs need to be questioned, and there needs to be a Supreme Court uh, decision that looks at whether or not what they're doing is constitutional or not. One of the most striking revelations of this disclosure is that the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court does not have jurisdiction to pursue investigations into compliance. Does that need to change? Well, there's a couple of problems. One, they may not have jurisdiction, but two, they're only hearing one side of this. So if you were to go sit down in a room and the NSA tells you why they're doing all these things correctly, you have no means of challenging that. You have no means of alternative information. And without this Snowden leak, in fact, we wouldn't even know of this internal audit. Without the Snowden leak, we wouldn't have known that James Clapper lied to us, lied to the Senate, and said, oh, that we were not collecting any data on Americans. And it turns out, yes, they're collecting billions of pieces of data on American cell phones every day. Now, according to this audit, a, a lot of these violations were apparently uh, unintentional. But the NSA chose not to report some of these violations as it has a responsibility to. Does that need to change? Well, see, they chose not to report the program, period. They said they weren't looking at any American data or any phone calls, and it turns out they're looking at billions of phone calls every day. So I think the whole program needs to be reviewed, but it can't be an internal audit. There's sort of a similarity between this scandal and all the other scandals. The president thinks the IRS can police themselves as well and that they'll do an internal audit. He thought the State Department could do an internal audit also. But the thing is, is nobody ever was fired in the State Department. No one's been fired in the IRS. The director of national intelligence lied to the Senate and I think greatly damaged the credibility of our American intelligence community and nothing has happened. There are no repercussions other than he says, well, we had a PowerPoint presentation. We had some lawyers come together who worked for the NSA. The only way to find justice is you have to hear both sides. So there really needs to be a discussion from people who are a little bit more skeptical of the NSA in an open court, I think, before the Supreme Court on this on this uh, program. So when, when Congress comes back to Capitol Hill in a couple of weeks, do you believe there needs to be congressional hearings into all of this? Yes, and I think legislation could help. The, the hard part is, is that we only hear one side also. Mm -hmm. The NSA comes and they tell us our side and tell, tell us their side, tell us how they've foiled all these plots. But it turns out when there is a discussion back and forth, we really discover that they did not uniquely use this American surveillance program to get anyone. I think they got most of the terrorists or stopped most of the terrorists, if not all of the plots, 
by good old-fashioned police work and getting wa uh, warrants and getting wiretaps on people who they were suspicious of whom they ask a judge about. And I'm not against that. I'm all for surveillance of spies. I'm just not for this gross bulk gathering of data on all Americans. In fact, you are one of the most strident critics of the current NSA surveillance program, but w with congressional hearings, with more congressional oversight into that program, with more duty to report compliance and other aspects of it, would you be comfortable enough with it to let it go ahead? You know, I think it would be better with more oversight, but there's some things that they're doing that I fundamentally think are unconstitutional. Our founding fathers, when they wrote the Fourth Amendment, they said a single warrant goes towards a specific individual and what you want to look for. And you ask a judge and you say, John Smith, we think is doing this. We have probable cause to think that he's involved with a crime and you get a warrant. The Constitution doesn't allow for a single warrant to get a billion phone records. You know, they have a warrant that says we want all of Verizon's phone calls, all of AT&T's phone calls, all of et cetera, et cetera. They basically, I believe, probably are looking at all the cell phone calls in America every day. Also don't think it's good police work. I think we get overwhelmed with data. We have so much data that we don't notice when the Sonarif boy goes back to Chechnya, his name is misspelled and we don't know that he's gone back. I think we need more mm -hmm. people doing specific intelligence data on people who we have suspicion of rather than doing it on suspicionless searches of all American phone calls.